Hey, I think this is the first time I'm starting a video late in the evening. It's about 6 p.m. right now. And that's because uh, day after tomorrow, I'm gonna hit to Seattle and then pack up, take care of some stuff, and then make the trek driving all the way to Texas. I'm gonna be hitting uh, San Francisco, LA along the way. So I'm both excited and not excited. Like I'm excited because I love road trips. I love driving down through California, San Francisco, LA, Vegas, gonna have a lot of great food. But I'm also kind of nervous because, you know, obviously with the climate we're in. So prepare for a lot of on the hood dining. And I'm starting the video now because I'm actually on my way to Boston. I have some business to take care of in Boston tonight. So I'm gonna drive to Boston, stay the night, and the next day we are gonna do a food tour of Boston. Just got to Brooklyn Chinatown, and this brings back memories. This thing was open since I moved to Boston, which was about 20 years ago. And I remember always coming here because this place would always be open super late, and they would have cheap and really good food. Uh, I don't really feel like eating inside. It's actually kind of a lot of people in here. So I'm going to get some food to go. The tomato and rice, that was something I always got when I came here. But like 11.30 at night, and that place is half full. It's one of the only places that opens till 1 in the morning. Oh, look at this. Well, this place is still open. This looks like a Sichuan slash Shanghai place. Ooh, steamed pork with garlic. Oh, that's one of my favorite dishes, bao cai. Let me tell you why I always got the tomatoes and egg and beef over rice dish. Nowadays, this dish is $9. Back then, it was like a four or four fifty, dollars And this is a to-go container, so obviously it's smaller than what's on a plate. It's still pretty hefty. This is a good pound, maybe a pound and a half of food. And on the plate, it's even bigger. So if you get one of these, it will completely fill you up. Also, oh, they used to give you an egg that goes with this. Maybe they do if you're eating inside the restaurant. So back then, I really didn't have any money. I would come to the Taiwan cafe and get this dish. And sometimes it'll be the only thing I eat all day. So I also got the Lu Wei, the marinated tofu and marinated beef and beef tripe, the husband and wife long slices that I always love as a Sichuan dish. And this thing, oh my God, gooey eggs. I always love how they did this. The eggs, the tomatoes, and beef are in this like starchy, gooey sauce that goes so good with the rice. All that nice juice just gets all over that rice. And this is my absolute favorite dish to get at that place. Actually, this is the only dish I've ever gotten at that place. That's still as good as ever. Oh man, I miss this. I travel all around the world. I can't find this anywhere. Not like I can't find tomatoes and eggs, but it's just the way they make this. Like some people might taste this and not even really like it, but for me, I guess it's just tasting like the first time I've ever been on my own, you know, moving away from the Midwest and to a city with more Asians than just me and my family. So all that's kind of involved in this as well, but I, I love this. Mm. Slightly sweet, juicy tomatoes, gooey eggs. Again, the sauce soaked into the rice, just making everything so incredibly scrumptious and satisfying. I do miss that egg that they give you. Um, I don't know if they don't give it to you anymore or because I got a to-go order. You don't sleep on that egg. Oh, this is actually really good. Mmm. This is okay. Beef's a little tough. Really for me, it was all about this. I haven't had this dish since I left Boston. Oh, if you love tomatoes and eggs over rice, which pretty much every single Chinese person does, you'll love this. It's about 11.40. I never eat this late, but I just can't help it. Like I always go to this place when it's super late. So I'm gonna eat up, I got some work to do. And then tomorrow, the official food tour of Boston begins. And it starts with ramen. More in Boston. So the more I research, the more awesome food I want to try. But they all open around like 11 o'clock. So I wanted something for breakfast. So this is not going to be real breakfasty, but there's a, a lobster roll place that's open kind of early.
There's only a couple of lobster roll places that are open this early. Polly's and Salty Girl. So I had to make a decision between the two. Oh, it's right, right here. Salty Girl Seafood Bar. It was a really simple decision. And the deciding factor was, there's actually parking here. Lobster roll, clam chowder, a must have when you come to Boston. My favorite place is actually Neptune's. Amazing lobster roll. But they don't open until way later, so here I am. They're actually doing pretty good with the whole social distancing thing. They have sitting outside, indoors. Um, I would have felt pretty safe eating in there, but I have about 30 minutes to eat because the ramen shop I'm really, really interested in and, and then going to, they're gonna open in about 45 minutes and it takes me 15 minutes to get there, so 30 minutes to eat this. Another reason I gotta eat this quick, it is freezing. Clam chow, oh, what is this? Looks like some big chunk of something in here. I see potatoes. I don't see a lot of clams, but I do see some chunk. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, what is this? Oh, those big chunks are like fried clams, like giant fried clams. Oh, that's delicious. Creamy, savory, peppery. And the fried clams come as just like a slightly toasted outer shell. So that kind of does the job like, like typically a, a cracker would have done for clam chowder. And they make their own hot sauce. And I told you guys, if you're getting clam chowder, you gotta add some hot sauce to it. Either Tabasco or whatever, but it needs to have hot sauce, trust me on this. I know a lot of you, like your whole lives, you've been eating clam chowder, you never put hot sauce in there. You need to, it will change your life. You don't need to add a lot, just enough to make this red. Girl, let me try their hot sauce. They ain't joking around with this. That will light you up. I'm surprised when I, oh! Oh, that is spicy. I'm surprised when I opened this that winter didn't automatically change to summer, yeah. I wouldn't overdo this if you're coming here. That's the type of spice that most, most people probably wouldn't be able to handle a lot of. If you're a fan of clam chowder, which I am, come here and try theirs. This is absolutely amazing. Next up, the lobster roll. Hot lobster roll. Oh look, they make their own chips. <laughs> that is a small lobster roll. What is that like, like a three, four incher maybe? I'm glad it's not just just like a like a toasted hot hot dog bun, which some people just slap the lobsters on. But it looks like a nicely toasted bun, almost like a like a French toast-ish kind of sear, and stuffed with piping hot lobster and butter. Woo! Don't judge me. I'm picking that up and eating it. I got a five dollar piece of lobster right there. Yes, this is small, but this is amazing. Mm. Oh, that's so good! Giant chunks of fresh, sweet lobster. The roll is buttery, it's toasty, it soaks up all that great juice from the lobster. And of course, the mayo and the butter without leaking even a little bit, so it traps all that good juice and flavor inside. And when you take a bite, it's it's just almost too much for, for my brain to process. They're just so much to love. Your brain's like, what, what do I love more? The, the sweet lobster, the, the toasty bun, the, the buttery flavor, the sliced citrus from the lemon juice, the creaminess, like what, what is it? I just have no idea what to focus on because this is too overwhelmingly good. This thing will 100% put you in the ultimate food bliss every time you take a bite. I think this is called a lobster cutsio. It's basically lobster and uni pasta. I know a lot of people are obsessed, totally obsessed with uni. I'm starting to like it a lot too. In the beginning, I was kind of like, yeah, this thing just kind of tastes like, like the ocean sneezed into a handkerchief. But over the course of the last couple of years, I've had really good and fresh ones. That's when I really start to like it. The pasta, you can tell right away, just from jabbing it with a fork a couple of times, perfectly cooked. You see all the chilies and spices on the pasta, huge chunks of lobster meat and they're kind of crusted a little bit and I assume the uni is just perfectly cooked in this sauce. All hail Poseidon, Ursula, Little Mermaid, I don't, I don't know, whatever food gods or Disney characters you pray to, thank them for making this place. I haven't had a single bad bite so far, and this is the perfect closing act. This is all I ate in Boston. I'm pretty happy with that. Pasta, like I said, perfectly al dente. Mm. 
sweet, juicy pieces of lobster. You can taste the uni, you can taste the ocean. All the best part of the ocean swirling around in the sauce is covering every inch of these noodles. So if you're a lobster lover, you're a uni lover, you're a noodle lover, whatever it is you love, this thing's pretty much got it. I'm gonna drizzle on their hot sauce as well. Because I, I love this thing. It burns in all the right places. Mm. Okay, I gotta eat up and go. The ramen shop is opening and I hear there's always a long line and sometimes they sell out. I gotta get there before they open. And the reason I moved to Boston was uh, I loved history and I just loved how well, historical Boston was and I just kind of like dreamed of living here one day. I used to go running every day along the Charles River and there's one thing I feel like I should be in the Guinness Book of World Records for. Maybe I'm the only person, I'm not sure. So I lived in a town called Quincy, Massachusetts, one of the kind of like a suburb around Boston. I also lived in Quincy, Illinois. So I'm thinking I might be one of the only people that's ever lived in all the Quincy's in the United States. Right, that might not be a big deal to you, but like, I feel like I should get some recognition for that. Baby, I don't mind you calling. I'm still away in my bed. Say the things you shouldn't be saying. I don't want you to act like you still have that halo. Halo, got the halo. Like you still have that So what should I get? I'm thinking spicy cold. What do you think? Yeah. So I'm gonna be honest. Um, Japanese spice is much more of a flavor. Yes. Spice. Yes. Right. Yes. That's what I'm expecting. I think you get the spicy cold. Spicy cold? Spicy cold. That's what I'm thinking as well. Sir is telling me they do sell out every single day. So today you guys only got 140 bowls. I got the first one. <laughs> Give a shout out if you want. She watched. <laughs> All right, so Mike, what we got here is our spicy cold Niku udon. Oh my god. So we make our own ryu chili oil. Uh -huh. Make all the noodles, that's a marinated beef. Uh -huh. So this is our tare sauce, it's a dashi base. Yes. What you're going to do is pour this all across here. You're going to finish with your tenkasu for a little bit of a crunchy sauce. That's awesome. You know what I'd recommend? What? Right before you eat your udon, just take a sip of the tare sauce. Uh -huh. That's going to like really open up your palate. Just really like... I will do that. And right beside the ramen place, there's this really authentic izakaya looking Japanese stall. You want to get a katsu dog. Oh, and they make their own onigiri as well. And it's run by this really nice Japanese couple. Like everything in size, feel like you just kind of like walk into Japan and just, oh. if it wasn't for this whole COVID thing, you could probably just sit at the counter and just have a really nice meal. Down this little corner nook here. You just gotta like be creative uh, uh, about where you're gonna eat your food during these crazy times. Itadakimasu. So this is the spicy cold ramen. Fatty beef on top. Look at all these chilies. This looks so pretty with the fatty beef and the chilies. Got a little bit of red, a little bit of green. I love how the chilies cover all the noodles. You don't see those a lot in terms of like a very spicy Japanese noodles, but they definitely loaded on the chilies for me and I appreciate that. This just looks so incredibly enticing. Squeeze my lemon on, throw in a little crunch. And listen to Sarah's advice and take a little sip. Oh, that's delicious. It's like a umami sledgehammer just pounded my tongue. Oh, that's so incredibly nice. And then they were nice enough to give me some soup as well so I can have no food regret. This broth is so good. Mmm. If it wasn't so cold out and my noodles are perfect for this cold atmosphere because it's not gonna get any colder, I would have wished I got the soup version. The broth is so light, yet decadent and incredibly rich full of flavor. That is a preview of things to come. I am in for a treat.
Oh, these are good noodles. I wanted to taste this without the dipping sauce first, just get the sense of the noodle texture. It tastes almost like liang pi, like a Chinese chewy wheat noodle. This thing is so chewy and slurp worthy. I should have like a slurp worthy meter for noodles. This would 100% receive the crown for full on slurp worthiness. It's very rare you get noodles that are this springy. This is reminiscent of Liang Pi, which is one of the springiest, chewiest noodles in Chinese cuisine. And I never found Japanese noodles to be quite that springy until now. This is truly a work of art. A dish touched and blushed by the food gods. Oh, I love the fatty beef as well because the noodles is quite refreshing. Then that nice fat from the beef renders on your tongue and you just feel like balance is restored in the food kingdom. As much as I love the texture of these cold noodles, I love this broth way too much. I'm gonna just dunk some of this right into that broth. So perfect for a cold day. What I love most about this broth is the seafood element in here. Like regular meat broth and bone broth is good, but shops that add that extra seafood element to it, it's just next level. Yeah, do what I did. Come here and get your noodles before they sell out for the day. Gotta try this. Oh my gosh. I say that because this thing is about three pounds, at least three pounds. I would say three and a half. This is a hefty portion of food. So this, a soup and a freshly made onigiri, only $13. So this is a freshly made Katsu dough. Oh, so they basically made an omelet and put it on top of the katsu dough with caramelized onions and seaweed. This is the katsu. Look at how amazingly juicy this is. One of the most emotional dramas I've watched recently is called Angel's Last uh, Mission. You guys should watch that if you want to, you know, sob your head off. Biting into this omelet and this katsu gave me similar emotions. How could this omelet be so light and airy and just incredibly flavorful? And the pork katsu is one of the most tender ones I've had in a long, long time. This is 100% a super worth it, valued meal. Mmm. And what's really amazing is that he kept like the egg yolks and the egg whites kind of separate. And they each have their own textures and flavors. The egg yolks got more flavor. This Japanese place, complete guidance by the food gods. I was looking for the noodle place and I thought the Japanese place was the noodle place. So I was standing there talking to the auntie for a little bit and then I realized it wasn't, but then I saw how amazing everything looked. So luckily I stayed, oh, I messed, I messed this up. I messed this up. This is what happens when you're, when you're not concentrated. Okay, you gotta, when you're opening this, I, I, I do this a lot. Japanese food items, like they open, there's a there's a method. So you have to go by the method. I was talking, I wasn't paying attention. These are handmade onigiris. Anyway, so I got something and they just seem like the most adorable auntie and uncle, you know, just working together, running a little authentic eatery. And you can taste the love that they share between each other. It's definitely spilled over to the food. Mmm. So light. And taste that. Some of this awesome broth. Oh, that's perfect. So this is the spicy tuna with mayo. It's spicy, creamy, fragrant, flavorful. And these things are typically like a little hefty rice balls, but this whole thing just tastes so light and wonderful. Mmm. I'll just go in there, get some noodles, Get a bunch of these, get, get the, well, I can't. I wanna get the pork color bowl as well, but definitely need the soup. Just get all this every time you come here. They are good for food for today. Oh, also, Cambridge, the area I'm in, is, of course, home to Harvard University. Harvard University, of course, is the college that I spurned. I chose not to go there. Instead, I went to uh, Truman State University, the Harvard of the Midwest. So I spent four years thinking I went to the Harvard of the Midwest, when in actuality, I went to one of many Harvards of the Midwest. Really embarrassing. Anyway, so if you are going to one of these schools that claim to be the Harvard of the Midwest or Harvard of the West or Harvard of the South, whatever, 
just know you're not alone. This is my next food place, Coreanos. This is a really interesting concept. It's like a Korean Mexican place. So they have like kimchi tacos, uh, short rib quesadillas, things like that. Anyway, I got some Korean fried chicken. I got like one of their famous uh, bowls and I had to get a taco. And while I'm waiting for that to cook, I accidentally walked the opposite direction because you know, I was lost and Boston's kind of hard to get around. And I saw this Chinese noodle place. And it looks like kind of a mix between hand pole noodles and Xi'an food. So they got bian bian mian. Uh, cold noodles, they got rou jia mo. Let's try a couple things out. This is a crazy looking bowl. So in this is a short rib fried rice with some kind of spicy mayo sauce on top. And look at this, beautiful runny egg. Let me just get the egg flowing. Here, open up that yoki dam and just let it go free. I mean, the rice is positively glistening. Pieces of short rib as well. Look how beautifully shiny the rice is. And this is just pure, simple fried rice. Literally standing in a neighborhood right now. If you're watching this, I'm in front of your house. I'm sorry. Oh, this is so wonderful. Oh my God. Yes, I would like to have something like this every day of my life, please. Mm. There's nothing too fancy about this fried rice. It's just good. That's what really food has to be. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to have like 20,000 ingredients that I can't pronounce or understand. It just has to be good. And this is good. Rice is buttery. It's flavorful. Wherever the egg touches, it's yolky, it's gooey. The sauce on top, I think it's just some sort of kimchi sauce. Crunchy carrots, short rib, they definitely just grilled it. It's smoky and nice. with a ton of great smoky flavor as well. But even better, if I had some kimchi to go with this, but otherwise, knock it out of the park. Simple but delicious fried rice. I was actually searching around for good Korean fried chicken. Is this because I haven't had this in a long, long time? Can I miss it? And I am so glad this came up. Oh, this is good. Mm, sweet, spicy, juicy wings from heaven. So much crunch with that beautiful slow burn. It's like right on the back of my tongue right now, radiating forward. It's so aromatic as well. You can smell the umami from the soy sauce. You can taste the fantastic flavor from the toasted sesame seeds, as well as the aroma from the scallions, the outside shell. Listen to this. Such a delightful crunch wrapped around a just delicately juicy piece of chicken. Great umami flavor that's coming off the chicken. And I like that more than even the, the burn that is leaving on my tongue. I think this is the spicy pork kimchi taco. All right, the tortilla, first of all, it's kind of thick and it's a little cold. So I don't think they made that in-house. I mean, no one recommended it. I should get a taco from that place. But, I don't know, just Korean-Mexican, think of tacos. There's stuff I like, there's stuff I don't like. Don't love the cold tortilla. This is obviously not made, it's kind of thick, it's not great. love the slaw in the kimchi. That's the best part of this taco. Spicy pork is good, but the highlight right here. It's both sweet, creamy, and spicy at the same time. It's good, but I like the fried chicken and the fried rice better. As fate would have it, I, I came across this uh, noodle place. So I got a Chinese burger and a noodle. And I think they may have put the Chinese burger in here. If they did, that would just be a magic trick because Chinese burgers typically are not this small. Oh, theirs is really small. I'm a little taken aback. This is about maybe a little more than half the size that these buns typically are. I mean, the inside looks like jalapenos, onions, cuts of lamb. I mean, it is stuffed very, very well. It's not bad. Lamb is the best part, super tender. Love that. Bun itself, a little too crumply for me and a little too thick. And I do think it needs a tiny bit more salt. It's not bad. 
it's okay. This I'm really excited about, the Byung Byung Cuban Lamb Noodles, and of course, thick cuts of Byung Byung Noodles, cilantro, green peppers, cabbage inside, covered in chilies, and of course, tender pieces of lamb. I 100% sponsored these noodles. This is good. Really good. Ah, wow. The lamb here is the same lamb they put into the uh, to the bun, but here it's seasoned better for some reason. A little more salt, a little more flavor. Same degree of tenderness. Noodles. Gorgeous. Springy, chewy, buttery, spicy, perfectly seasoned strands of noodles. Absolutely marvelous mouthfeel. And I love eating these noodles dry in dishes like this because the cumin and chili is really able to hang on and really able to sink that flavor into every single strand. So this almost feels like stir fried noodles. That way the noodle gets to keep all that great texture. This dish is spicy. It's got that great barbecue cumin flavor. Texture is fantastic, both from the crunch of the veggies to the tender meat to the, again, the, the chewy noodles. It's one of those dishes that the more you chew, the better your day gets. Mm. This is definitely finale worthy. All right, I gotta eat all this stuff up before it gets cold because I'm standing out here in like 20 degree weather right now. And now I'm gonna go back to Chinatown. I gotta get some barbecue ducks to take home with me because up in the mountains, like we don't have such luxury. And also gotta grab a bubble tea. Got my two ducks for later. Goodbye, T. That's what they call the subway here in Boston, the T. Goodbye, Warrior Ice Arena, home of the Bruins and the Celtics. I was gonna go get a bubble tea and maybe a dessert, but I just realized it's kind of late. It takes me five hours to get home. So I gotta go home and pack, and I'm flying out, like I said, tomorrow. So a lot of stuff to sort out tonight, but it was fun coming to Boston. I wish I uh, spent more time in Chinatown. Chinatown, Boston, a lot smaller than I remembered, but glad I was able to eat my favorite tomatoes and egg dish at the Taiwanese cafe. Although that dish is like not very Taiwanese, but they make it the best. Had some good noodles today, some good fried rice, good fried chicken. I feel like it was a good trip. I had fun today. Hopefully you guys did as well watching this video. As always, all the places I went to, this is down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.